Selena Gomez's new album, Rare, has arrived. Timothy Chalamet upsets fans with new look. And fans think Beyonce will be in a new major film. Ooh, all that and more on today's Daily Hollywood Rundown. What is up, you guys? Happy Friday, TGIF. Welcome back to today's episode of the Daily Hollywood Rundown. I'm Susan Morad. And I'm Emil Ennis Jr. Thank you guys so much for tuning in each and every week. This is the first official week back in 2020 yep. for DHR, and we're so happy to be back. Um, we have a lot of tea to cover. Lots and lots and lots of tea in today's episode and in tomorrow's episode of Celebrity Lowdown. Yes. So make sure you stay tuned for that bright and early in the morning, depending on where you are in the world. Yes. But we have a... <laughs> <laughs> we also want you to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Yes, That's what subscribe. I'm trying to say. Then you won't miss a single thing. Yes. And, and also comment. And hit the bell and comment because yeah. we're doing You're So Clever today and we're gonna be pointing out some of our favorite comments. Okay, now that we got all of that out of the way, <gasps> let's go ahead and kick it off with some Selena Gomez yes. news. All right, folks, Selena's new album, Rare, has arrived. We actually put a poll up on our community page to see what your thoughts were about the album. Surprisingly, 58% of you said you hadn't listened. Now, mm. I did post it late last night, so maybe you guys were just <laughs> asleep and you just woke up and didn't have time yet, but 24% said it's so amazing and obsessed. 7% said, I like it, but I don't love it. 8% said, no, and 4% said, it's okay. Anyway, the album is a little over 40 minutes long, so I don't know what you're waiting for if you haven't listened, but there are certainly some great songs in there, and we are glad that Selena is back. Just hours before the release of Rare last night, Selena opened up about the process of making the album and what her fans really mean to her. So during a sit down with Spotify called Rare Stories, Selena nearly broke down as she touched on just how much the fans have changed her life. Take a look. It's not that I love them because they love me. I love them because, or you, if you're watching it, uh, because it's really been about the journey. And I feel like I grew up with a lot of people. Selena went on to add that she was especially affected by the fans that would share their deepest stories with her saying, quote, the most heartbreaking conversations are where they are just telling me that they are suffering. When it came to naming the album though, Selena took inspiration from the messages she relays to her fans about how loved and how special they are. And as soon as she heard the name Rare a few years ago, it instantly stuck. She revealed, quote, I just felt like that was me, if that makes sense. Obviously, I've had a lot of self-esteem issues in the past. I still struggle with confidence, and it's going to be something that I'm always working on. Rare made me feel incredible. That name was so important to me the moment I heard it. Now, it has been four years since we got mm -hmm. music from her, and of course, fans are doing a deep dive in addition to everything else with the music trying to figure out what's about Justin and what's not about Justin. Mm -hmm. But we at Clever are just happy we have new music from Selena. Yeah, I'm so happy too. And I've listened to the album, yeah. I'm loving it. I'd say some, like my early favorites, but I know with everything, especially mm -hmm. once you listen to it a few times, you start to like alternate on right, the days right. what song you're really into more. But I'm loving Rare. I love Rare. Dance Again, I really love the beat in that. And yeah. also Cut You Off. I like Cut You Off, I love fun. Oh it, yeah. Um, and then I still love Lose You To Love Me. I was gonna say, when I was yeah. listening through the album again and Lose You To Love Me came, I said, I think this is still my favorite. But I, the Crowded Room song, I feel like that's gonna be one that after a couple of listens is gonna grow Yeah, on me. and I feel like, I mean, even hearing, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm -hmm. mm -mm. Yeah. Again, I was like, oh that's my god. Still yeah, that's still I'm, the, on the my two, face. The two title tracks that she released. Were the right ones. Yeah, but I Rare believe. is now up there. Yeah. Okay, you guys, this is not a drill. Fans think that Beyonce is going to be in the upcoming James Bond movie. What? No time to die. And uh, let me explain. As you probably saw, Beyonce was at the Golden Globes this past weekend looking amazing. And after the star started event, she took to Instagram to share some pictures of the night in her incredible black and yellow gown. But there is one picture in particular that has a lot of fans thinking that Beyonce just shared a clue that she will be in the upcoming James Bond movie, No Time to Die, which will be the latest installment in the franchise. Now, it was this behind the scenes picture of Beyonce taking a sip of a martini. And as you probably know, martinis are the drink of choice of James Bond and many fans know better than to take Beyonce's posts at face value. The upcoming Bond film will be released in the US in April of this year and many fans now believe that Beyonce will in fact be singing the theme song, sharing their speculation and excitement on Twitter. Like this person who said, 
I think she's gonna be in James Bond project. Martini is his signature drink. As well as, she's not gonna get away with it this time. Beyonce, James Bond theme confirmed. With fans pointing out that Beyonce had posted a picture of herself with a lemon, taking a sniff of a lemon just before lemonade. Well, fans were also thinking the speculation makes sense because the release date is not that far off, yet no word has been announced as to who will actually be singing the theme song. Like this person who said, Still no confirmed singer for the No Time To Die intro, you could be totally right. But the martini glass, you guys, wasn't the only clue fans believe was a hint about her upcoming work in the James Bond film. Eagle-eyed fans noticed a correlation between the clock in her Ivy Park campaign picture and the release date of No Time To Die in the US. This fan tweeted, Beyonce had the clock second hand on four. James Bond comes out on the 2nd of April, the fourth month. Beyonce is doing the James Bond theme. And the rumored feature in the new James Bond film soundtrack, number one, the clock in the Ivy Park and Adidas ad points to four and 10. The new James Bond film, No Time To Die, will be released on April 10, four stroke 10 in the US. Well, there were also fans that pointed out this specific moment from Beyonce's 2018 Coachella set, which featured a sample of the Bond theme during a performance of Don't Hurt Yourself, tweeting, Beyonce has been hinting at James Bond since her 2018 Coachella set when she sampled the theme tune during Don't Hurt Yourself. I mean, there are so many good clues there, Emil. You gotta admit, they kind of do add up. However, some fans weren't buying it, saying things like, can Beyonce just enjoy her martini without us jumping to conclusions? I mean... The clues make sense. The clues do make sense. They I make still sense. remember um, Adele Skyfall, that thing. Like, the James Bond theme song, whoever Iconic. has the privilege of doing it, it's such an honor. And they're right when it comes to Beyonce and her clues. She is not um, just somebody to just randomly post a photo. She, she doesn't post a lot. Exactly. Yeah. So it always means something. I would be very intrigued. And remember, it would be nice if not only because, uh, what was it? Uh, Austin Powers gold member. Yes. She did music for it and she was and she in it. In, yeah, I would love, to, oh my God, can you imagine? I would die. Oh my God. Well, no time to die, cause like that's the name of the movie. <laughs> All right, you guys, well, like we teased earlier in the show, it is time for one of our very, very favorite segments called You're So Clever, yes. where we think you know, you guys are so clever. We love reading your comments. So we're going to highlight some of our faves. So it was so nice coming back and seeing all your comments. Like, I'm just so happy you guys are back because I was so bored without y'all. Praise Zeus. You don't even understand. As well as I missed you guys so much. And you know what, you guys, we miss you so much. As well as love the fresh cut. You guys are so cute. Love this duo. And I think the cut was probably your fresh cut. Yeah, I'm yep. getting a haircut tonight, yep. so. Yep, <laughs> as well as yay, you guys are back and love you guys. As well as someone who pointed out, y'all never sang the Monday DHR. <laughs> Which can I just say? We did though. And that's why we also got this comment. So glad you brought back the Monday DHR song at the end. I need that to start my week right. Love you guys and you guys brighten my day. Mm -hmm. You gotta watch the full episode yes. to see everything. And you guys brighten our day too. So thank you so much because you're so clever. Yeah. All right. We actually don't talk about Timothy Chalamet Enough. often on here, yeah. but love him. And he is actually on the tip of a lot of people's tongues. And they're talking about what's at uh, the tip of the top of his lip. I'm talking about his mustache that he debuted. Um, fans are divided. You know, Susan, when um, you have your favorite celebrity, mm -hmm. they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. And that's how fans feel. And they are definitely <laughs> chiming in when it comes to his new mustache. So Timothy debuted a new mustache and goatee this week in New York City. After pictures surfaced, fans immediately began to chime in on Twitter and the reactions are hilarious. One person said, if Timothy Chalamet does not shave that mustache off of his face right now, I am calling the police. Someone else shared this gif and said, Timothy Chalamet showing up to 2020 like, and then there is this fan who is adamant saying, stop normalizing Timothy Chalamet's mustache. <laughs> but not everyone was upset. Like this fan who said, I like Timothy's crusty mustache and what about it? And someone else said, Timothy's mustache is really sexy and might be the missing puzzle piece for me to finally stand him, but y'all didn't hear that from me. <laughs> but even though people are focused on the mustache, we have to talk about his shirt underneath because a fan confirmed that she gifted Timothy this shirt. She tweeted, I made this shirt, so glad you're wearing it. Ah, looks so good. What's the verdict, Mill? I, you know, I, <laughs> I love when celebrities or anybody tries a different look, you yeah. know? I went through my blonde phase for a little bit. Yeah, I like figuring out my hair. The funny thing is, I'm, <laughs> when you talked about the cut, I get a haircut, if you guys don't know, every single Friday or Saturday. And my haircut consists of just lining it up and like fading this side, but like, 
I let this part grow out, and <laughs> EJ, who is one of our shooters here. Oh my god, we need to. We oh, need he to. got a cut too. Yeah. But he'll let me know when it's getting too. He's like, uh, your hair is getting tall, and I'm like, oh, and I'll look, and I'm like, have like a box up here. But like, you remember last year when Emil? This is like totally off topic. But when Emil, <laughs> when your barber was out of town for a few weeks, and I was like, saw you one day at work, I was like, gee, Emil, your hair's getting like. It really was looking tall. rough. Yeah. It was rough. No, but no, I, good. I'm, I approve of the mustache. I like when people try new things, and it's great. Growing, so maybe he'll like grew like a full. Yeah, and I think people shouldn't discriminate against different varieties of men's <laughs> facial hair because everyone's, you know, you see men's beard, like you called it a goatee, yeah, yeah. and mustache always looks different on different people. Right. And I mean, let him have some fun. I think he looks good either way. Yeah. All right, Susan, it is time for the final, final rundown. rundown. One and a half minutes on the clock. Kicking it off with Reese Witherspoon mm -hmm. and Jennifer Aniston. Everyone was talking about Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon at the Golden Globes this past Sunday after Jennifer revealed that when her table ran out of water, Reese asked Jay Z if they could have a glass of his champagne. Reese Witherspoon just updated us. I just got home from New York and the most beautiful flowers are here and a case of Ace of Spades champagne. She goes on to say that the note read, more water from J and B. I mean, send me a box send of champagne. Me. I want some Ace of Spades. Or, or just let me sit at your table. <laughs> right, or something. at the foot of your table or something. <laughs> but we must move on because if you watch DHR, you know that Demi Lovato has been teasing her debut mm. on Will and Grace. It finally happened and we are through. If you didn't know this was happening, you clearly haven't been keeping up with us on DHR. But anyway, Demi made her debut and her role has finally been revealed. She is playing the role of Will's surrogate on the final season and it's so great to see Demi acting again. Uh -huh. I really, I miss Demi acting. Yeah. And you get a little bit of her year. music videos, but like she's like yeah, really acting. Yeah, this again. is Demi's year, absolutely. Now moving on to our next story. Megan Thee Stallion and Normani just dropped diamonds and you guys, it is everything. The new song is from the soundtrack track for Birds of Prey and it's the collaboration we didn't know we needed. Listen, I cannot wait. I am rooting for Normani in 2020. Megan Thee Stallion oh, yeah. had like a strong year last year, but just like this is Demi's year, I believe it's Normani's year. Same. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm ready. Yeah. I'm so ready. And well, we did a video as well a couple of weeks back, which was a panel with, ooh, ooh, with Drew, Sinead, Emil, myself and Maddie. Mm -hmm. And uh, we discussed a whole bunch of music videos and that we, that we loved from 2019 yeah. and Normani was like a big favorite. Mm -hmm. So check that out if you have time, it was pretty fun. You know what, Emil? Mm -hmm. It's the end of the show. So yeah. it's the time we ask questions and then I just had like a, a moment in my mind where I thought of something else about the Beyonce story. What did you think about? So I was just thinking, so they were drinking Ace of Spades that night which was champagne. Uh -huh. But the picture she posted of her taking a sip was a martini glass. Uh -huh. So it is another re it's another thing to say she doesn't do things by like oh, just, I see what you, mean. you know I see what, what you I'm mean. saying? Yeah. So, I want to know what you think. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, I want to know what you think. Do you think that Beyonce will be singing the theme song in the upcoming James Bond film? Or do you think, let the girl just drink her martini <laughs> case? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Yes, and I want to know what you think about Timothy Chalamet's shocking new look. Um, <laughs> let us know in the comment section below. And of course, make sure you tune in to Celebrity Lowdown tomorrow morning, right on the big comfy sofa. Yes. We have some Jeffree Star news. Dude. We're talking about a royal family. So make sure you tune in mm -hmm. and we'll be back here tomorrow. tomorrow. But hold on, before you go anywhere, we're doing this and we're <laughs> on the opposite side. Make sure you catch up on yesterday's DHR right here. Yes, and then click right down there to subscribe. Subscribe. Join the family.